morning everyone we are going to start advanced reaction engineering so this is a core course so in this course we'll discuss about the reaction engineering so how to conduct any reactions in any lab scales or industrial scales and what are the basic components are required so that details uh, we'll discuss so the objective of this course is to develop a fundamental knowledge and a clear understanding of the chemical reaction engineering i hope after attending this course by acquiring the basic and fundamental knowledge you will be able to solve various chemical reaction engineering associated problem and there are almost all items or chemicals or the products that we are using in our daily lives uh, that is the outcome from any chemical uh, reactions okay so there are many chemical reaction on industrial reactions that we have studied before and for example so we can say that sulfur to sulfuric acid productions nitrogen to nitric acid productions or ammonia productions carbon dioxide and ammonia to urea production sodium to sodium hydroxide productions there are so many chemicals so industrially how they are preparing and for that if we conduct this particular reactant to products for that and for that particular reactions the basic requirements are the raw materials reactors and the catalyst these are the basic things we need if uh, and moreover the other important factor that are the reactions temperature pressure flow rate of the reactants that would be fit to the uh, reactors and once the reactions is over there is either there is byproduct formations or not so that also important that we should know and with that many other parameter means that is associated when the reactants or catalyst that we are placed inside of the reactors and we are conducting the reaction then so the chemical kinetics reaction mechanism reactions rates and reactor types reactor size and once the reactions is over so then the conversions yield or selectivity of that particular reactions these are the things we should uh, know or we should evaluate for a particular reactions okay moreover the reaction engineering analysis the chemical kinetics is the study of the reaction mechanisms and reactions rate in combined with a reactors where the reactions will take place or reactions will occur okay the selections of the reactors uh, for a reactions or a reaction systems is very important so depending upon that and that particular product a particular uh, means a higher concentrations or without having any undesired products that way we can and uh, choose and to run a reactors uh, the safest and more efficient way to conduct for a long period of time that is the key success of a chemical plant means once we design a reactors and for a particular process or particular reactions if we operate for a longer period of time safely if you are able to operate that uh, reactors for that particular system or reactions then that is the key success for design of a that particular reactor for that particular process okay in a reactions or any chemical process if a large amount of the undesired product formation is there and then uh, we have to go for purification separation of that a uh, desired product and to we have to remove the undesired products so for that what would happen so unnecessarily the overall system cost that would be a more so that is not economically uh, feasible for a particular reactor or a systems okay therefore the productions of the desired product or the target product with a high purity and cheaply is always a challenge for a chemical engineers okay chemically uh, engineer depends on the data we are getting from the chemical laboratory and so once we know that data in the from the chemical laboratory or maybe from a pilot plants or from a large scale reactor that would help us to design a particular reactor or reactor setups for a particular systems or particular reactions or particular process okay sometimes the laboratory data is used directly to the scale of uh, for a process or a large scale reactor designs if the reactions rates are known any type of reactor that can be designed okay therefore the laboratory data or pilot plant data that is very important so design a reactors okay so since the uh, reactions rate means once we uh, discussed about the reactions or reaction engineering so reactions rate is important so that reactions rate are used to evaluate the 
chemical kinetics of that process. Okay. So, a reaction is performed in a constant rate at a particular temperature in a reactor means sometimes we are using a catalyst and for a particular reactions and suppose a reaction is operating at let us say 100 degree centigrade. If we want to conduct the reactions at a lower temperature then sometimes we have to use some catalyst then so that catalyst can help us or activate the or promote the reactions that reactions we can conduct at a higher rate at lower temperature may be. Okay. So, therefore, the, there are many problem or challenges that are associated with the design of a reactor to facilitate or facing uh, whenever we will design a reactor. So, that uh, as a chemical engineer mostly we will face. Okay. So, here I am showing a uh, systems. Okay. So, here is in the left hand side you can see that is A and B reactant that is as a reactant that will pass in a reactors. In reactors, um, there is some uh, we have placed catalyst and so when reactant A and B that is passing through the catalyst inside of the reactor then it converted into product C. We have to operate the reactor at a temperatures T and P that we have to fix and then reactions may conduct we can get product C at the right hand side you can see. So, not only the product means final product uh, only the pure product we are getting uh, for this reactions and this reaction system. With that also unreacted reactant E and B that also come out with the uh, systems or the after the reactions. Then uh, we have to separate them out means component E and B from the product and then we can get uh, many uh, means the desired or high pure or highly pure desired product. Means uh, unreacted reactants we have to remove if there is any side product by product that also we have to separate out from the system. So, in this case uh, here is in this system this is the general or basic uh, part of a reactions uh, here is reactant reactions product catalyst temperature pressure these are the way we can separate out we can classify the systems in the these are the components means one is the reactions that is A plus B going to C reactor temperature effect pressure effect and catalyst these are the components. So, one by one if we means see want to see the effect means uh, if we conduct the reactions inside of the reactor. So, then temperatures if we change means increase or decrease what would be the effect in the reactions. If we change the pressure of the systems then so how uh, reaction systems will operate whether is there is any effect um, in the conversion selectivity or yield of the products or not. And even sometimes we conduct uh, reactions we use a catalyst. So, that may be a, that catalyst is good for that particular system, but uh, sometimes we want to uh, change the catalyst, we want to develop some new catalyst, then maybe the new catalyst may be better in terms of conversion, in terms of product selectivity, in terms of yield also. So, therefore, the, these are the parameters we should one by one uh, discuss that would be much more uh, means uh, to get an idea about the reaction system. So, these are the things we should know. So, first the reactions, if you talk about the reactions, so then when the reactants let us say single reactant may be for a particular reactions may be two or three reactants may be entering or feeding in the reactor. So, that in terms of gas or may be in the form of liquid uh, that reactant entering inside of the reactor. So, when the reactant is entering inside of the reactor, so then mixing characteristics of that particular element is very important and concentration of the each reactant is also very important means uh, any concentration we cannot fit inside of the reactor. So, that is also very important at what concentration so mixings we, uh, we should enter that reactant into the feed. At the same time a reactions may be exothermic or endothermic. So, then if it is exothermic then heat evolution should be there if it is endothermic temperature should be down when reactions will proceed inside of the reactor. Therefore, the temperature control either removal of heat from the reactors or means uh, putting the heat into the reactor to maintain an isothermal condition that is also important. At the same time external diffusion of the reactant to the surface of the catalyst uh, that is also very important and single or uh, the reactions may be a single uh, reactions or may be multiple steps reactions uh, desired uh, product formation and desired product formations. Uh, these are the things when we talk about the reactions, these are the parameters uh, we should uh, focus on that. Okay. At the same time the reactors, if you talk about the reactors, 
the reactor volume, reactor size, reactor length or the type of reactor that is very important. Means whether for a particular reactions we choose a small reactors or a large reactors. So, that we have to choose at the same time so when we will operate or select a particular reactor. So, then uh, when the reactions will take place in presence of let us say catalyst bed is there through that reactant is passing. So, then many uh, times we can see that reactant without reactants it is passing through the bed means that does not take part means reactant does not take part in the reactions. So, means channeling or bypassing each of the reactants may be possibilities there. So, therefore, that would affect the overall conversion yield and selectivity of the systems. So, that we should discuss and we should point out means whether the reactor we have designed it is ideal reactors or up to what extent it is ideals that also we will discuss. So, then the temperature effect already have discussed. So, it is maybe exothermic endothermic based on that we should control the temperatures means for a particular systems so that way we have to design the reactor. And next pressure effect. So, when we talk about the reactors means catalyst or catalytic bed is there. So, then means if we have taken a very small amount of catalyst then in the case of lab scale study. So, then pressure effect is very nominal. So, in large scales in industrial scales we operate particular reactors. So, then large big bigger size of the reactor would be there large amount or large volume of the catalyst you have to take and then uh, the pressure effect would come. So, then when pressure effect will come for a particular reaction so then product selectivity yield everything will change accordingly. So, therefore, the pressure effect for a whenever we design a particular fact bed reactor we should focus on that also means how the pressure will affect in means conversion yield selectivity or somehow overall system. Okay. Next is the catalyst part means that catalyst part if we talk. So, catalyst is important that is the main part of a reactions and when we design a particular catalyst we have choose a particular catalyst for a particular system. So, then the catalyst will synthesize that catalyst and then we put inside of the catalyst reactors to conduct the reactions. So, the from catalyst point of view how we will synthesize that catalyst means synthesis of the catalyst that is very important and with that the evolution of that catalytic property means catalytic shape size at the same time so when a catalyst we have taken for a particular system or reactions. So, then so there may be a surface diffusion means internal diffusion external diffusions also that type of problems is there in a particular catalyst or catalytic system. Once we design a catalyst there are active part in that or active sites are there in a catalyst. So, active sites will be distributed inside of the pore of the catalyst. So, then so reactants will pass through that active sites or the pores and then if properly that reactant does not pass through that pore. So, then so may be there is some problems or associated problems may be means concentrations of the reactants will vary then that would affect or reflect in the conversion or selectivity of that particular reactions. Okay. So, these are the things we will discuss related to the catalyst. Okay. Uh, here is a few industrial reactions I will show. So, means what are the, the reactions mostly used in the industrial scales uh, in a whenever we are going to uh, means synthesis a particular product. So, uh, we start with the reactants and final we are getting the products. So, the reactants we are entering inside of the reactor or the system or the process and final product we are getting that is not very easy means in a single steps we are not getting multiple step or multiple process or pathway is there. So, here few examples I am showing here let us say ester hydrolysis, nitrations means benzenes to nitrobenzene productions, aniline to cyclohexyl amine production and fissure trap synthesis means syn gas to hydrocarbon production that may be olefins or paraffins production. Here water gas sieve reactions you can see ammonia oxidation reactions uh, there is uh, ethanol to acetaldehyde productions. So, if you see or look into these reactions here is uh, almost all reactions some one uh, means catalyst that is required or catalyst is used and in uh, reaction to reaction the catalyst are also uh, different. Uh, Let us say this uh, reactions if we use chromium copper based alumina supported catalyst here reactant is the ethanol and uh, oxygen that we are getting acetaldehyde that is our desired product. So, with that some other undesired product means over oxidation is there CO2 formation is there in this reactions. This reaction is a series reaction or multiple reactions we can say. Similarly, uh, glucose oxidations and dry reforming methane. So, means here if you want to product a syn gas then here we have to use nickel catalyst at 800 degree centigrade. 
then we can get methane and CO2 to syn gas. Similarly, stream reforming of methanes also a catalyst we have to use, catalytic cracking there uh, this is not non catalytic reactions. Similarly, biomass to uh, biogas productions there also we can conduct catalytically, non catalytically if you want to catalyst then the overall reaction temperature, conversion temperature may be uh, down. Okay. So, that would help means catalyst that way help us to conduct the reactions at low temperature or lower temperature. Similarly, other ODH reaction means industrial reactions and showing few reactions. So, this is ethyl benzene to styrene productions here we have to use chromium uh, alumina supported chromium oxide catalyst at 600 degree centigrade. Similarly, to butane to butane production, propane to propylene production, uh, benzene to cumin productions. These are the very important reactions in industry these are used to uh, get a particular products and here oxidations of uh, cyclohexane to cyclohexanol known productions, uh, ethane to ethylene oxide or epoxide and from there to ethylene glycol productions. In particular process you can see a particular temperature means ethylene to ethylene epoxide or oxide productions there we have to use silver catalyst at 260 degree centigrade 10 bar means that particular operation is the optimum temperature and pressure that we have to use to get a, a good yield or higher yield of that particular product. So, in a particular stage uh, the process that we will discuss later means the if we want to get ethane to ethylene glycol. So, that is not two reaction or two steps. So, many multiple steps or process are there after that the final yield or products that pure products we are getting. So, here is another reactions means CO2 hydrogenation reactions, methane formations or ethanol production, methanol productions. So, a particular catalyst at high pressures that is required or similarly if we want to decompose uh, the organic material that is present in the waste water, if we want to decompose that in presence of oxygen. So, then some microbes sometimes are used so that helps to decompose it. So, therefore, uh, these are the uh, things we should know before start any reactions. Okay. So, here I am talking about or discussing about or showing the ammonia production. So, here you can see nitrogen and hydrogen that is the starting material that we are using uh, for ammonia productions in a particular reactors we need. There we should maintain a particular temperature 400 to 500 degree centigrade and high pressure that is 200 bar that we can use. And there we can use iron catalyst, iron based catalyst we can use then we can get the final product that is the ammonia and maybe that conversions may not be 100 percent or complete conversions. Some undesired reactant may be left in the reactor. So, then again we have to separate out in a separator and then recycle back to the feed stream. So, by that we can conduct the reaction, but here is pure hydrogen and pure nitrogen from where we will get. So, nitrogen will get from airs and the hydrogens will get from natural gas. So, natural gas again we have to decompose in any reactors. So, there is from natural gas to hydrogen we will get and then we have to separate out pure hydrogen will get and then we have to uh, prepare for that ammonia synthesis. Okay. So, this is the way. So, how the process diagram or process flow diagram that we will discuss. So, here I am showing the natural gas how you we can use uh, in a catalytic system or reactor. So, there we can get uh, hydrogen from methane to hydrogen. See here is catalyst any nickel based perovskite type of catalyst uh, we can use at high temperature. But in this type of reactions has some problems means the catalyst we are using uh, at high temperatures that is deactivated means once the reaction is started operation is started. So, it has been observed that catalyst is deactivated after a certain period of time so the catalyst we cannot use that may be 1 hour 2 hours. So, then catalyst deactivated then again we have to send back to the means we have to take out that catalyst from the reactor systems and then so we have to send it back to the regeneration unit or regeneration system there the catalyst will be means separate the if there is any coke depositions or any other purpose I means poisons or any other things I means absorbed from the surface of the catalyst that we can separate it out and then that we again send back to the main reactors there is against the cracking reactions will take place that way we can change the process or as per requirement of the process we can change the process to get the final product and we can use that catalyst for a longer period of time by regenerations. Similarly, others means naphthalene to phthalic anhydride productions. So, here you can see in the bottom. So, top one that is the stoichiometry of the reactions where left hand side naphthalene and oxygen that is the starting material and right hand side the phthalic anhydride that is the 
final products in the process means uh, to carry out these particular reactions one particular point there is the feed of the naphthalenes pure oxygen feed is there that would come to the reactor then reactions will take place and then products uh, means final conversion should be there again we have to separate them out and then uh, co2 and water whatever that will get as a byproduct that will be separated out and final the thallic anhydride will get we have to separate out we have to store in a pure product okay Similarly, here the ethane to ethylene glycol production. So, uh, here multiple reactors are used, multiple steps are there, multiple processes are there. So, details we will not discuss. So, just to show you means uh, how industrially that particular starting material is the ethane. From there, we can get the ethylene glycol as a final product. Okay. Similarly, benzene to nitrobenzene productions, the process flow diagram that I am showing. So, not I am not discussing details here. Okay. So, now I said uh, the reactions means so when we have started, so here uh, we have used uh, the reactants that is coming or passing through the uh, reactors and then uh, after reactions we are getting product A, B, C, then again we have to use a separated that final product that is coming out from the systems after reactions uh, that is uh, from the tops that is the pure products we are getting that is the C is the desired product and A, B that is the left means unreacted reactant that is after separation sent back to the recycle stream that already you have discussed or we know or we that is a very common in any process industry. Okay. So, now uh, means uh, heat removal or heat additions part that already we have uh, said that means when a uh, reactions we conduct. So, their heat addition or removal is very important when depending upon the reactions either it is exothermic or endothermic reactions. So, for that we have to use the or change the reactor systems. Here I am showing uh, let us say in the left hand side you can see reactors uh, is there. So, here is a CSTI reactor. So, if we conduct any reactions in that particular reactor. So, through that input reactant will be entered inside of the reactor reactions will take place inside of the reactor. But the reactions if it is let us say exothermic reactions heat formation or heat generation is there. So, what we have to do? We have to means remove the heat from the system. So, then we have to use a chiller throughout the reactors and then at a particular flow rate that cooling or chilling or means that liquid circulation should be there throughout the reactor then uh, the excess heat that can be removed out from the reactor. So, by that we can uh, remove the uh, means excess heat and maintain the reactor as a isothermal condition. So, to carry out the reactions for longer period of times. Similarly, in case of the plug flow reactors also there. So, there also we can arrange the reactor such a way that external heating coils would be there or means for to supply the heat to the systems so when reactions will take place means from the left hand side the reactants each uh, enters and from the right hand side the reactants will be uh, after reactions the product will come out. But uh, inside when the reactant is there in presence of catalyst when reactions will take place then as if we can maintain the isothermal temperature or the desired temperature to conduct or carry out the reaction. Similarly, various uh, means of whenever we uh, discuss about this reactions for a reactor or a catalyst or catalytic systems. So, uh, the any reactions in chemical engineering we can express in terms of A plus B going to C plus D that is the product. So, now we are coming to the rates means how the rate we can express for a particular reactions. So, that is uh, it is a uh, means minus RA that is the rate of the uh, disappearance of the reactant A that we can express minus RA that is equals to K into C A. K is the reaction rate constant and C is the concentration of the reactants. So, or the right hand side that way also uh, the rate we can express means that is the very simple algebraic equations or the rate equation. So, this way you can express the concentration of the reactant C uh, A in terms of C A and reaction rate constant and minus R A that is the rate. That way we can uh, write the uh, rate of a particular reaction means when the reaction is taking place the reactant is consuming or disappearing during reaction that we can express. Okay. So, uh, the rate also minus R A that is we can express D C A by D T that is the concentration changes of the component A that is the reactant uh, with time. So, either minus R A equal to D C A by D T or R A equals to uh, C A. Okay. So, that way we can express this way or this way you can use. 
So, if uh, let us say any reactions, let us say it is uh, gas and solid based reactions, then rate we can express minus uh, Rf prime that is the rate for heterogeneous reactions, uh, moles of Fe that is disappearing per unit time per gram of the catalyst. Here so you can see uh, the rate we are using minus Rf prime that is the moles of A that is disappearance or consuming during reactions per unit time per gram of the catalyst that way we can express the rate of the reactions. Okay. So, now select a particular reaction then you have to choose a particular reactor. So, the type of reactors or the method of operation uh, that is very important for a uh, reactor design means uh, whenever we are going to design a reactor. So, then the choosing of a particular reactor which particular reactor would be the suitable for our system that is very important. Okay. So, that is uh, we have to uh, decide and based on that the reactions we can conduct a very uh, means uh, ideally or very good way we can uh, means uh, start the reactions inside of the reaction and so we can conduct the reactions. Uh, so, here is the reactions uh, we talk about that the reactions may be gas to gas or may be gas solid reactions or may be liquid gas reactions or gas to gas reactions. So, reactions we can classify means depending upon the reactions means reactant may be in the form of gaseous form or may be reactant in the form of liquid forms catalyst is the in the form of solid or may be in the form of liquids depending upon the reactions will uh, start or reactions will take place. Okay. So, depending upon that uh, nature of the reactants you have to choose a particular reactors. Okay. So, here so I am just summarize few reactors. So, here you can see here is the batch reactors, we have studied semi batch reactors, plug 4 reactor, CST reactor, packed bed reactor, these are the very common reactors. So, in industrially used, so that we have studied or we have uh, studied in our UG course. So, recycle reactor also we have studied. So, apart from that there are some other reactors which are more complex or reactors. So, these are the uh, fluidized bed reactor, moving bed reactor, state through transport reactor slurry reactor, trickle bed reactor, these are the reactors also we can study. So, we will uh, means uh, discuss about at the beginnings uh, first few lectures, first two or three lectures we will discuss uh, about the basic or general red equations after that or design equation for a particular reactor based on that these are the reactors uh, how that can be used for a particular system and for that particular reactors once we are using. Uh, for a maybe gas solid systems or liquid solid system. In that case, once we use that type of reactor, particular reactor for a particular system, so then uh, design equations or how a reaction we are conducting inside of the reactor. So, details uh, means red equations or other things we will uh, discuss. Okay. So, apart from those, uh, there are some other type of reactors also CBD type reactors, aerogel type of reactor, micro reactor, membrane reactor, bi reactors. Uh, high pressure reactor, autoclave reactor that is one kind of batch reactor. So, here uh, this is the just uh, means uh, a particular reactance we are talk, uh, we are talking about a particular reactor, let us say batch reactor, how does it look like? It is a system, so here is just uh, reactants we can place inside of the reactors and we can conduct the reaction. Similarly, CSTR reactors also there. So, here so this is the CSTR reactor. So, here so you can see here inlet is there means reactant is entered and product is coming out this is the flow reactor simultaneously their reaction is also taking place and PFR reactors also this is another type of reactors here there is no stirring part is there means no stirrer is there here just tube or uh, long tube is there through that reactant is passing and we are maintaining a particular temperature then reactant is when it is moving then conversion will take place in a conversion is there means reactant is converted or consuming gradually and uh, with along the length or down of the reactors, the conversions gradually increase or higher conversions will get at the end of the system. Similarly, packed bed reactor is also there. So, here packing catalyst that packed in the form of packs we can place inside of the reactor. So, this is catalyst uh, that we can place inside of the reactors and once the reactants will pass through that catalyst bed and then we will get product. So, here is semi batch reactor is there, it uh, recycle reactor is there. So, this is the just uh, schematic diagram of the recycle reactor you can see. So, 
I said there is some other reactor that is called fluidized bed reactor. Today is up to this and then uh, we will discuss more details about other type of reactor, how does it look like and then details design equations or other things for individual reactors we will discuss. Okay. Today is up to this. 